How are you all doing, ladies and gentlemen? So we're here today with Oversimplified, the Falklands Mini Wars number one. Um, yeah, I, I thought, you know, there's a ton of videos that I've not done from the Oversimplified series. So let me do the Oversimplified series, and this time I actually mean it. Uh, there's a bunch of things that I've wanted to do over the past couple of weeks, but as you've probably noticed, there hasn't been any videos over the past couple of weeks because I've been kind of busy with things. Um, things kind of returning back to normality, I guess. But I do have a little bit of time right now for the couple, next couple of days. So I thought, let's do all your oversimplified videos. So uh, there'll be like one each day coming out over the next couple of weeks that I have not done. Um, if you've not already seen these videos, I've already done World War One and World War Two, um, and now we're at the Mini Wars series. So we'll see what obviously that is all about. I'm assuming just like tiny, you know bite-sized videos that's my assumption with mini wars um or not gigantic wars such as you know the world wars um but yeah i would just say let us hop right in and see what this video has in store for us also be sure to subscribe give this video a thumbs up and um share it i guess that's what people say when, when they make videos share the video like and subscribe so go ahead and do that um but regardless ladies and gentlemen next one ooh, the american civil war but anyway let's see what this video has in store for us Hi, English Mariner John Strong. Hi, Anthony Carey, 5th Viscount of Falkland. I would very much like for you to go to Chile and locate the wreck of a Spanish treasure ship for me. Okay. Uh, okay. Hey, I found some islands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The English were probably not the first to discover... Oversimplified. I gotta add that. First of all, check out obviously the original video first before you watch my reaction to it. I'm just doing a reaction here. Uh, my video is not the original video, so go ahead and check out the original. Give Oversimplified their view, because um, obviously they put the time and effort into making this video. For the Falklands, but they were the first to write it down. They found it to be cold, wet, and miserable. Sounds Just like, like home. Yeah, exactly. They established a colony in 1765, <laughs> unaware that the French had also discovered the islands and done the same a year earlier. And for a while, the two were Perfect. unaware of each other's existence until presumably there was an awkward moment where they ran into each other. Then the Spanish showed up and told the French that a couple hundred years earlier, the Pope drew a line on a map and said all of this belongs to Portugal uh -huh. and all of this belongs to Spain, and that the island was in Spain's territory and they would like the French to hand over their settlement. Now, since the two were good friends and Spain was willing to pay in cash money, the French obliged, but since they were still a little bitter about the recent Seven Years' War thing, Puerto Soledad. They made sure to warn the Spanish not to let those dirty English on the other side of the island take over. All right. So Spain went over to the English and explained, Pope, line on map, Spain's island. Nah. And the English said, yeah, right, this is our island. Yeah. But the Spanish had more guns, so they kicked them off anyway. But then England threatened to go to war. So Spain went to their friends in France and said, hey, it looks like stuff is about to go down. You in on this? And the French minister of war said, yeah, and we'll launch a full-scale invasion of England and party like it's 1066. And it didn't. But then King Louis XV said, one, you're insane, and two, you're fired. Sorry, Spain, we're not ready for a war. Yep. That's kind of the thing with history, right? Just, just throwing it out there. That's kind of the thing with history. It doesn't always go to as doesn't always go as planned. And historically speaking, people don't like to go to war against England um, for multiple reasons. But historically speaking. The reason they made their empire, the reason they made such a huge empire, um, is primarily because they've got a strong navy, a strong navy, and people don't like going up against a strong navy, especially in those times. Nowadays, you know, air force is a lot more prevalent, but like, it was all about the navy back then, and because obviously the UK um, is an island itself. That is you know, associated with a lot of um, other European countries. They had the wealth to build such a strong navy. All right now. So Spain had to give the English their settlement back, saying it's still our island. And the English said, no, it's our island. Then some colonists in North America got a bit rowdy, so the English had to leave their settlement to go focus on that. But they left behind a plaque that said this is totally still our island. So the island was in Spanish hands, but then a French guy, no, not that one. That one turned on the Spanish, took over most of the country, and captured King Ferdinand VII. And in response, the Spanish colonies in South America started vying for independence. So Spain had a Joy. little bit on its hands and also had to leave the islands. And for a couple decades, the islands were left uninhabited except for the penguins, some fishermen, and the gauchos, which are basically like cowboys, but cooler and Spanisher. Olay. A merchant from Hamburg <laughs> living in the now independent United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata heard about the feral cattle roaming the Falklands and thought it would be a good way to make some money. 
So he got permission from both Buenos Aires and the British government to set up trade there as a private venture. Some American ships came down and began hunting whales and seals around the islands. And Vernet wasn't too happy about it. So he asked everyone, Buenos Aires... Everyone is always hunting whales. Why? I mean, I, I get why. So much meat. But why? For some military assistance in defending the islands. But Buenos Aires said, meh, do it yourself. Gave him some weapons and appointed him governor of the islands. So he seized the U.S. ships and arrested their crews. In response, two things Man's happened. Lifting. First, America came down and said, "Nice settlement you have there. Would be a shame if someone destroyed it." And then they destroyed it. Second, Britain heard Verne had been appointed governor, meaning the United Provinces, actually now the Argentine Confederation, were officially claiming the islands as theirs. So mm -hmm. Britain showed up and said, "Hey." Didn't you see our plaque? And since they had more guns, they kicked them off the island. And the Falklands remained firmly in British hands for the next century. They officially became a crown colony in 1840. Port Stanley became the island's capital in 1845. The cattle hides from the island weren't worth much, so they imported sheep from Britain in 1851. Two world wars came and went, and all this time, the Argentinians never rescinded their claim over the islands. Now it's 1976, and after a couple civil wars, a new brutal military dictatorship sponsored by the US fight against communism has taken control in Argentina. Can I just take a moment just to say how insane it is that this is, has been like a 200 year old um, root problem that caused all this, you know, ultimately the the, 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 the bigger uh, mini, if mini wars, the bigger mini war, right? It, it's a, not like a um, immediate thing, like kind of like the world, I mean World War One, perhaps not so much, but World War Two, mm, debatable as well I guess, but World War, right. I guess all the wars have like a multi year long history, I guess, but like a spark, a trigger, you know, there, there was no real like spark or trigger. This has kind of just been building up, building up, building up, building up until the final spark just ignited it into a full scale battle, um, which is very similar, I guess, to like the First World War. But the point I'm trying to make is that this has been building up for such a long time and it's always just been, yeah, okay, tiny little scuffle here, tiny little scuffle there. But uh, nothing like major. And by 1981, this guy was in power. The economy had been struggling for a long time, and Galtieri had been unable to improve the situation. Now, if you ever find yourself the brutal military leader of a struggling South American country, and you start getting into hot water, here's a bit of advice that has been tried and tested throughout the century. Go to war. Start a war to distract everyone from their misery. Galtieri knew how popular he Isn't just for South American countries. Happen every country does that. The second you're struggling, go to war. It's that simple. Be if he could finally take back Argentina's last Malvinas from the occupying British. There had been proposals to cut British military spending, and the ice patrol vessel HMS Endurance had been withdrawn from the area. So the Argentinians assumed the British may not even bother doing anything about the invasion. After easily capturing the largely uninhabited South Georgia Island, 600 Argentine troops were sent to the Falklands. The small number of Royal Marines and other British forces stationed there put up a small amount of resistance, but in the end had to surrender to the larger Argentine force. Crowds in Argentina celebrated the news, but they were wrong to assume the British would do nothing oh, yeah. because the person in charge of the United Kingdom at the time was this lady. Thatcher was a somewhat controversial prime minister, but whether you loved her or hated her, there was no denying that she was tough, like metal, iron, for example. Somewhat controversial. Doesn't quite paint the picture. I mean, even today, people are like, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, people even today go back and forth with her. So somewhat controversial. Ooh, I'd say very controversial. She immediately declared an exclusion zone around the islands and organized for a task force of over 100 ships to set sail for the Falklands. The United Nations expressed concern at the Argentine invasion. All South American nations apart from Chile backed Argentina. And since the United States had propped up the Argentine dictatorship, Reagan went to Thatcher and said, could you maybe just let them have the islands? And Thatcher said no. Okay, here, have some weapons. <laughs> Fighting a war over 8,000 miles from home was a logistical challenge for the British. They requisitioned civilian cruise ships and containers, and they used British-owned Ascension Island as a forward base. By the time they arrived at the Falklands in May, the Argentine forces had had time to entrench themselves. The first task for the British was to gain control of the seas, which they did easily. On the 2nd of May, a British submarine sank an Argentine yeah. cruiser. The sinking was controversial, as it occurred outside the British exclusion zone. It was also the largest loss of life in a single incident during the war. And in response, the Argentine Navy withdrew from the island. 
The next task for the British was to gain air superiority. While the Argentine Air Force controlled the skies, they were able to inflict considerable damage on the Royal Navy below. Days after the sinking of the General Belgrano, two Argentine Super Etendars carried out a raid on the HMS Sheffield and sank it with an Exocet missile. For weeks, the Argentine Air Force would continue to carry out raids and inflict heavy casualties on the Royal Navy, with British Sea Harriers doing their best to take out as many of the Argentine aircraft as they could. While the battle in the skies raged on, San Carlos was chosen as the best landing site for the British ground forces. An SAS raid took out Argentine defenses on Pebble Island, and the HMS Alacrity sailed through Falkland Sound to flush out any Argentine supply ships. The landings began on May 21st, with Argentine aircraft carrying out full-scale raids mm -hmm. on the task force ships taking part in the landing, damaging several and sinking a few. But anti-aircraft cannons and sea harriers shot down many of the aircraft. And like, once it just kicks off, it just kicks off. Superiority, and a beachhead was successfully formed. Then the ground troops began their movements out of San Carlos, across the north towards Stanley, and south toward the Argentine stronghold at Goose Green. In the following battles, a clear trend emerged. The Argentine conscripts put up a good fight, and with the rough, muddy terrain, the war was by no means easy for the British. But with highly skilled Royal Marine commanders and parachute regiment troops, the British would often find themselves taking on larger numbers of Argentinian soldiers, who would still come out victorious with yeah. minimal casualties. The 14-hour-long battle for Goose Green commenced on the night of May 28th. The battle ended in a decisive British victory, with over 900 Argentinians surrendering. Then, it's, it's with 5,000 reinforcements arriving from the 5th Infantry Brigade, the British started preparing for their final assault on Stanley. In a series of hard-fought battles, they took control of the hills and mountains surrounding the town, as the Argentine forces withdrew with British ships shelling their positions from offshore. Utterly surrounded, on the 14th of June, the Argentinians surrendered, and the war was over. The two-month-long war claimed hundreds of lives and left the island strewn with minefields that still pose a problem to this day. Argentina still claims the islands, but in 2013 a referendum was held and the islanders voted 99.8% in favor of remaining British. Plus, oil was just found near the island. <laughs> Oh, sorry, but I'm just laughing at how that said. Islanders voted 99 free votes and then 0.8% in favor of remain. Lol. Just, just like, look, here's my thing, right? And this is the end of the video. British. Let me just Plus, play last oil 10 was seconds. just found near the islands, so the British probably aren't going to give them up anytime soon. Here is my thing. Here's my honest thoughts on this, right? I know I live in the UK, all right? Granted, okay. But this is, this is a no-bias situation. This all happened way before I was born. So this is, this is a no-bias situation for me right now, okay? My thing is this. I get why Argentina was fighting. But in my opinion, you... Unless you're like... I don't want to say, unless you're like a... European or I guess North American powerhouse. It's, again, there are all there, not just European. Obviously, you've got. I mean, Russia. People call that more Asia. I call it. I'm still part of like the generation that thinks that's more European. Um, you've got obviously now got like China as well. Um, but like unless you are or, or India, of course, unless you are like a well-trained superpower. In terms of the military, in terms of you know your financial situation, everything, um, you really. Sh I mean, it, it kind of sounds like bullying tactics, honestly. But you really shouldn't go up against a country on a mission. I right? uh, I don't know how to phrase it properly. The what I want to phrase, but like unless you say America, you. And I, I'm not just. I'm just an example, of course. I'm not just saying just America, but like unless you're America, or like someone with that kind of wealth with that kind of military you know it's difficult for you not to get sweeped like if um say if the uk i mean granted we're, we're not on a we're not on a conquering spree here but say the uk wanted to take over i don't know i can't i can't think of a country right now but say the uk just wanted to take over some random country right, right now that is like third world country right not very well developed you know the living standards are very low military standards are very low they could probably take it over in two months you know, that's, that's just how quickly they could probably take it over because the military is so advanced um, and that's why obviously there's such a huge military budget for all the major countries that like are embracing the aspect of them um, that embracing the aspect of themselves. Um, obviously, the three big ones that come to my mind, at least, are America, Russia, and China when it comes to military force. Uh, not, I mean, North Korea, not really. Um, 
but like when you think about them they always improve their defenses because they realize that like if we had well if we're the best defended if we have the highest military budget if we have the most military equipment then nobody else can hurt us and while i get that sentiment I'm, for me it's just like a it's just that let, let me buy all these weapons in case that burglar comes just like mm, is that really a valid actually because if you don't have the weapons and a burglar doesn't have the weapons Will there really be a burglary? There may be like little like, you know, fist fights here and there. Will there really be like a full-on burglary? Someone breaking into your house with you know weapons or not? I don't think so. Obviously, that's just an analogy here. But that's just the way I see it. Anyway, that was the Falklands. I didn't have too much to add to that. Because a lot of what they said is basically the standard knowledge. Um, which is basically exactly what I have. <laughs> the standard knowledge. Um, I'm, I'm not that well-versed when it comes to like modern wars. I'm much more historical. Um, as, I, as I've pretty much said like five times or six times by now, but like I'm much more historically versed, not so much like modern. Mo um, there's just that many wars that just, you know, you hear, you hear this war, that war, that war, and it's like, okay, I've heard it. I know what it is. I know the basic thing that you learn um, when you read a textbook or whatnot, but like beyond that, I have nothing to add. Uh, but yeah, that's just my take though, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you all thought about this. Um, video by oversimplified the falklands mini war the falklands mini wars number one as i said i'm gonna be going through all of the videos um just go through all every single one of them um because there's a bunch of them some of them are more interested than others of course um but regardless we're going to be checking them all out um but yeah ladies and gentlemen i'll be seeing you all in the next one everyone until then have a nice day peace out